All right, here we go. We're back. Sorry about that. I forgot that I had unplugged my webcam. So I worked a little bit on Flotagano since the last time I streamed. So let's take a look. Let's go over here to editors. Create scenario. And let's see where we're at. It's meant to be played on giant size map. So here we go. I overhauled the forests and the terrain masking on the center island here. I, I think I got the terrains looking just about as good as they can. And if anybody complains, I'll just say that it's an estuary and there's all kinds of mixing waters, we'll call it the ocean water and the fresh water mixing in this location. So that's why there's all kinds of different water colors. Hopefully folks can accept that. It would be nice if the mangrove shallows weren't so bright. Uh, they're very bright and it contrasts heavily with this. And I also wish that I could get rid of this ring of beach around it, but it's fine. I'll use the objects and I'll create all the little tidal pools in this area and so it should look a lot more natural when it's when we're all done with it and I I adjusted the elevation here and the amounts of elevation because I want it to have approximately this distribution here and we're gonna add more mangrove forests I think in here too because the map needs more wood on the outside not a lot more wood though actually oops but overall I made some pretty positive changes. I'm very happy with the direction that this map is going now. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it in action. Let's see what the players come up with for it. I, my sense is that it's basically going to be a water map. The ships can pretty much range everything here. But all of the land is elevated above the water. So the ships will do less damage and the land units will do more damage. So perhaps that will change things. I know that you can see a lot of land units on Water Nomad, but Water Nomad is mostly a water map. And there's also going to be this big section of land just in the middle where ships can't reach stuff. You can go here to get away from the ships. But then you might get stuck here. So we'll have to make sure that uh, standard victory type is enabled so that if you do get stuck here, you can build a wonder. All right, so let's see how our how our land distribution looks when we have eight players. You know how how the mangrove shallows compares to the sandbar should be a lot more open. We'll see based on the changes that I've made. Uh, no, okay. Actually, this makes sense. This makes complete and total sense. I may not mind this too much, though, to be honest. Is it really worth all the extra effort? Or should we just go straight to dialing up the mangrove forests? I just think we should do that. This is how it's going to be played most of the time. So these islands are a bit more pronounced. The power of galley is ner of galleys is nerfed. Let's ignore it for now. I think it's okay. Let's look at the other player configurations. Hey, Cesar, aren't you supposed to be at work? Welcome. Yeah, we can always mask over this dirt. Like, I'm not worried about that.
you know, the rocks don't move themselves out of the ground. Well, welcome, Cesar. Glad you could make it. Okay. And let's look at the four-player configuration. So whenever we decrease the number of players in the configuration, the density of these hills decreases because there are fewer of these big hexagons taking up all the space. Oh, he's on the train, okay. Well, train can be a pretty boring place to be. Okay. Yeah, I think this is this is fine. All right, so next is adjust the mangrove forests. And we, here we go. So maybe the mangrove forest is it's gonna make up 4% of the map. That might be too much. Basically, imagine these getting bigger by a factor of four. Although, granted, they have more places to spawn. Just kind of our objective is to give them more places to spawn. So let's, and what I mean by that is the spacing to other train types, we've been decreasing that. It makes it harder to build a town center, but if there isn't too much mangrove, then you're still going to be able to find places to build a town center. See, like right here. And we could even we could even decrease it to one if we wanted, but I think this is a case where we there's still legal spaces here. So let us increase the number of clumps of mangrove now. So there are 20 clumps. Let's increase it to 40 and see how that looks. El Pat Patoed Barba says, hello, coming from Juan Perotti's channel. Thank you for creating this map. Can't wait to play it. Uh, thank you. I am always looking for opportunities to help people. I like making friends. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Yeah, this is a little more realistic too, like the amount of wood. Might be able to decrease that number of clumps a little bit, or increase it by a little bit. I've never heard of, uh, who is, who is Juan Perotti? I know how to pronounce J-U-A-N, that's pronounced Juan. Yeah, there we go. I think this I think this is right. And there's still town center space. So we'll put the town centers or we'll put the, the gold and the stones and stuff on these little mounds. I think that seems more reasonable. Juan is Cesar's boss. Oh, Cesar, you play Age of Empires with your boss? I didn't know that. That's awesome. 
I wish I had played Age of Empires with my boss. We probably would have gotten along a lot better. Alright. So I think, yeah, I think that's good for mangrove forest now. And we can always adjust the amount of wood that's contained within the mangrove forest trees, too, if it's not enough. And it looks like we've got two different tree types. We've got the desert palms, and we've got the mangroves. And I was thinking about introducing another tree type, like on the top of the hills where the dirt is. We'll have to see how that looks, though. If it doesn't look right, we shouldn't do it. Now, this is an estuary, though, so there's going to be a lot of fish. So that is something that we need to think about. So start thinking about how much fish you want. Because we're going to be putting it down. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so here's the mangrove forest. We're putting down some... Oh, we're putting down some palm forest. Yes, let's adjust this, too. So we've got... It's putting some palm forest down on this beach terrain that you can't navigate. And there's not actually, there's not very much. So I'm thinking maybe we could dial that up a little bit and leave the dirt alone. Yeah, there's not very much. What? Why isn't there very much? Height limits two to three. Oh, I, I bet that's the reason why. Number of clumps 20. So if it's not tall enough, it won't put the palm trees down. So every once in a while you get a palm tree where the beach terrain gets tall enough. But otherwise it doesn't put it down. Maybe it should. I don't know, you guys can tell me what you guys think. He's the caster, not my boss, really. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> So you're gonna you're working with him, and you're you're organizing um, the tournament in terms of the procurement of the 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 map, the creation of your handbook, um, the administration of all the people who sign up for it and play, and uh, he's going to cast it once that's all ready and people start playing. It sounds like fun. All right, so this is. We're going to comment this. This is Okay. Okay, so we're we're creating some desert on the beach at certain heights and that's yep that's here and I'm actually going to on height 2 specifically I'm actually going to mask a little bit of gravel over that Actually, no, I, I don't I don't think I will. So let's let us however mask some desert over the dirt. That's something I've been meaning to do for a while. And we'll set no height limits. We'll just do terrain mask one. So the desert appears on top. Yes, that's it. Pato and other guys are part of the organization team. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, so we have... It looks like it masked in some places. So it looks like it belongs. Not fully everywhere, though, so we may need to repeat that command a few times.
I'm also kind of curious how buildable castles are over this map. So you could build a you can't build a castle on beach terrain, which actually makes castles surprisingly hard to build in some places. Which is a good thing. Castle drops are very very decisive. They're very powerful. I don't mind nerfing them. You can still build the castle on the mangrove shallows. So that's fine. Or you can build it on the top of a hill. Okay, so let's repeat this command a few more times. And we're going to say masking desert over the dirt. Over dirty lands. So those are created with... Yeah, like, actually, get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. That was when we were setting up the player lands. All right. Okay, and I, I basically, I think we're ready for objects, you guys. I think we're, we're good to go here. Which is exciting. And who knows, we'll be messing with the objects for such a long time, but I'm a perfectionist. And the wood is relatively evenly distributed across the map, so I'm not too worried about that. And if we really if we need to, we can we can increase the amount of wood contained in each mangrove tree. All right, so I guess we go to objects then. Let's do it. So, we need, we need a .ods file here. So, Let's copy this template. And we'll paste here. And we'll rename and then we'll organize everything here. So Pretty much starting from scratch. Delete those rows. Actually delete all that. Let's actually just delete all this. 
And this spreadsheet is essentially, it's going to be the basis for everything that we do here. Okay, good. And we, we have the text join command baked in somewhere. It's just invisible. All right. So what kind of objects do we have available that we can work with? Uh, I like to just go into the scenario editor and come over here to units, other, and then Gaia. And we'll see basically everything that, Gon that, by that Gaia has that we can use to beautify this map and make it look great. So because this is an estuary and there are lots of uh, rock formations, it's a very rocky sort of deserty area. I'm thinking I've got this idea. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about it. Of having like these rock formations forming these little pools, if you will. around the perimeter of the the islands. I think that could be a lot of fun. We've got some different rock formations that are available. We have one that's generally taller than another. Um, we may have some stuff. We've got just these huge ones here. We got to be careful about putting these down though because we don't want to allow players to wall off to that rock formation. Like we don't want we don't want somebody building a palisade wall like this and effectively walling that side off because of that big rock formation there. So that's something to think about. Let's see if we can spot any other rocks that could be good. Any other, you know, neutral objects. I think we're going to want like a desert. Hey, old forever young is here. Welcome. We're just working on Flotagono. I don't think we're going to do any Nubian pyramids because this is an estuary. It's a very natural part of the world. So it wouldn't really make sense that there would be vestiges of civilization. So what we are going to want, though, is we're definitely going to want some mountains, right, out here. Like this. And we've got several different types of mountains. I think they're... It's like Mountain 3 and Mountain 4. Yeah. So it's Mountain 3 and Mountain 4. And we can look those up in the list of objects. And this will help contribute to the uh, pyramid in AoE 2. Some news. Yeah, so Sasha Odrabinsky is the same as Old Forever Young. So I don't know if you guys know each other, but Old Forever Young is his name on Twitch. Which I always thought that Sasha was kind of a girl's name, but it's not, Ukrainian is not my native language, so I, you know, I'm not an expert about that kind of thing. In fact, to, to be honest, if I can tell a funny story, when I first saw um, Sasha's comment on my stuff, I thought that it was like one of those weird uh, trolls from far away or something those weirdos, they find you through the internet. I didn't realize it was somebody that I already knew until he explained. So welcome, old forever young. We are glad that you are here. All right, well, we probably don't want any pagodas or paths. Now we, we might have the opportunity to use some plants. Let's see. Oh, these are dead plants. These could be good. So dead plan is always good. We don't want a lot of green. So probably no green bushes. Maybe some small plants near the estuary. Maybe a green bush in the estuary portion. I don't know. What do you What do you guys think, Cesar? 
how much, you know, like, do you want, do you want some green here? This is mostly going to be a rocky, deserty area, so probably not a lot of green, right? But maybe a little bit of green. Let me get my notebook out and write down some of these things that we want that we think would look good on the map. All right, so I got my, my notebook out here. And we were just looking at the some objects that we think could fit the aesthetic of this map. And we're going to make sure that it looks all beautiful and everything like that. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. You're like, all right, just put the boars and the gold and the stone down first. I actually do not like to do that. I like to put all the aesthetic stuff down first so that the boars and the stone and the gold can... Um, can adapt to avoid it, can accommodate it, basically. Because, ironically, it's actually easier to get the, the stone and the gold and the boars and all those important competitive resources. It's actually easier to control those than it is to control the neutral resources most of the time. So I find it's good to just build up the neutral character, the map, and then you can fit those competitive resources around it. It's actually a lot easier. All right, so we... We had Mountain 3 and 4, that we said would be a good fit. So Mountains 3 and 4 would be a good fit, because they're desert themed. And actually, let's start from the beginning. Oh, Animal Skeletons. What do you think about that, Animal Skeleton? I think that that's... It's a desert, right? So that can happen. Uh, barrels, not so much. Although this water barrel looks pretty tasty. Bonfires, no. Box turtles. Skeletons, please. Exactly. I'll... You guys love skeletons down in Latin America. That's something I've... I've uh, learned over the years. You guys think those are the coolest things. Um, all right, do you guys like the box? Do you guys want turtles or do you want fish? Box turtles could be fun. Let me know. Um, so the question is, turtles or fish? So let me know, and then I'll circle the one. It's like I'm. It's like you're ordering a sandwich. Imagine that you're you went you you've gone to the grocery store to order a big submarine sandwich. Um. Oh, human skeletons. Uh yes, we could do that too. We could litter this island in skeletons. Maybe there was a big fight here a few centuries ago, or something like that. Maybe not not, not a few centuries ago. Maybe like a few. Decades ago, there was a big fight here, and now there are skeletons left over. And we can put all kinds of vultures, too, in the sky. All right, but we're getting out of uh, order here. So probably don't... Do you guys want burned buildings? Probably not. This is a kind of a natural area. Um, bush A. We got Bush B. Do you guys fancy any of these bushes? Do you want cactuses? Maybe we don't really need cactuses because this is the wrong type of, you know, like this is technically a lot of water right here. So cactuses don't really need to exist in this location. Um, bush A, B, and C are possibilities. Uh, we could definitely have some cracks. You need a necromancer to resurrect the dead humans. Exactly, old forever young. And then you would be very powerful. So I think cracks could be a good thing to include because it's a desert. So we'll have some cracks. And we may put the cracks mostly like on large elevation areas. I'm not sure yet. Um, we could have... Eh, maybe not so much craters. Actually, we could put a, if we have a boar, we could put the crater underneath the boar. I like to do that because boars dig. They're pigs, and maybe he thought that there were truffles here, and so he dug for them. 
Uh, no, to the dismantled cart. Um, dolphins. Do you guys want dolphins? <laughs> uh, probably not dolphins specifically, but maybe fish. I don't know. You guys think about what kind of fish you want and let me know. So probably no fern patches. Fern is pretty, pretty lush for this area. So we got all kinds of fish. And we're going to call it deep fish. And you guys let me know what kind of deep fish you want. We've got dorado, perch, salmon, snapper, and tuna. And if this were up to me, I would do something crazy like snapper. Maybe dorado. But tuna could be a better fit because it's an estuary. And tuna like to swim. Or not tuna. Salmon. Tuna, salmon like to swim upstream. Because that's all that's their whole thing. They they um they breed in fresh water. Hey, who who Coyotal is here? I just joined. I want to suggest an object which I have used slash discovered last autumn, uh, then used fr frequently since then. Respawning bamboo stumps on shallow water as small reeds. Ooh, I like that idea. Let me see if I can find. So you're talking about respawning basically having a bamboo forest tree that respawns on shallow water. That could be a good idea. As reeds. Okay, so anyway, so we got fish. So Cesar, pick a fish type and we'll put it in here. And this is for deep fish. Assuming you want deep fish. Maybe you don't want a lot of deep fish. I mean, you could make the argument that Deep fish is among the fastest food collection uh, types in all of Age of Empires. Yep, just set the dead ID of the bamboo stump as bamboo stump, and they regenerate. I've done it before. I did it on Akil for reeds. Maybe you guys don't want very much deep fish. I don't know. We'll have to see. It looks like small reeds, but is just visual, while the real reeds block the path. Cesar likes salmon. All right, so salmon it is. We're gonna we're gonna put salmon on this map. Deep fish is gonna be salmon. And I don't know how much of them we'll put. We we may not put that many, because deep fish is like the most. It's the fastest food collection rate in the game. Um, but then again, if players are going to be in the position to collect salmon, it's not going to be, you know, they're going to be having the low resources start outside. They're not going to be, um, they're not going to be playing in here because if you start on your island in the normal resources configuration, you can't get off your island. So it satisfies Cesar's needs for his, um, his tournament. And then it satisfies my my need to make uh, to make something fun out of it, something a little different that I can play with uh, my community. Okay, so we got we got some flames. Uh, I don't really know what we could set on fire though, so probably not. But that would be funny. A uh, flare would a flare would basically illuminate sections of the map. Uh, we don't know. That's uh, that's a good question for Cesar. I've only basically said Cesar basic. Cesar came to me and he said, "I I just want four Socotras on one map in sort of an enemy archipelago, but I don't want players to be able to interact or interfere. It's going to be an ergonomic." Um... Hey, Pyramid is here. Of course, I remember. I was just thinking about you the other day. It's going to be an ergonomic Socotra tournament, so that we have. So that we can we can have four four matches going on at once, essentially. And I said, yeah, I could do that. I mean, I could just direct you to Cruzini's enemy archipelago or something like that, and somebody could change the water out on it, and it could be like a five minute job. But I saw, I, I you know, looking at his idea, I saw that there was a lot of potential for it, and so I I wanted to expand it into something like this. I'm really glad that you're here, Pyramid. That you found me. Now, Pyramid, um, 
I believe Pyramid is from Mexico, actually. How did you find me here, Pyramid? Are you part of uh, Cesar's clan? Oh, Cesar, okay, he asked who Coyotal about it as well, and he's the one that forwarded you to the RMS server. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know where this is, who Coyotal. I, I just know that Cesar wanted the desert theme, and I wanted the estuary theme. And the estuary was not really relevant to, you know, what Cesar specifically needs the map for. So, therefore, I could just inject my desire to have an estuary. Uh, well, I guess the wa you could argue that Cesar's desire to have water that isolates people that they can't interact with um, sort of forced this idea of an estuary, but I'm fine with that. But anyway, I don't know where this is. Yeah, we've got a desert estuary. So wherever it is, it's got some Spanish-sounding name that Cesar came up with. So maybe it's in Latin America somewhere, but I don't know where. I'm not really an expert about Latin American geography. Alright, so we got flowers here. We could use these flowers, actually. But we probably don't want to use too many. So it's possible to use the flowers, but not that many. So I'll write that down. Flowers very sparingly in the water. Because it is still a desert. Alright, so what do we want, Cesar? Do you want forage bushes? Or do you want fruit bushes? Huhu Coyotl says, if it's more beach-like than big desert, it could be any archipelago in the Caribbean. There are some islands which are relatively dry because of the wind. That's true, Huhu Coyotl, but remember that we also need we need to satisfy the estuary theme. So Pyramid, um, well Pyramid, you can join the Discord, right? The Discord is in the video description. And I don't know if you had, if you don't have, if you don't have Discord set up, then that's fine. Um, if that's what you mean. So Cesar wants the fruit. Okay. So we're going to do fruit bushes. That makes sense. Fruit came out with the African DLC. Fruit bushes. And so it's generally more desert themed. Okay, no gallows. Obviously, we're going to have gold mines. Uh, no need for goods. Okay, yeah, see you soon. I'm glad that you've made Discord, because everybody that's on AoE seems to have Discord. And it's generally a nicer place than AoE Zone, <laughs> depending on the server you go to, of course. All right. So... I like these dry grass patches. I think this is appropriate. So I'm going to write this down. And let me know if you don't like them. But this dry grass, it looks good to me. And I think it's like technically savanna grass or something. So we'll add some of those. Hey, Zerg, welcome. And then we have grass dry which we can add as well so we have a lot of objects that can support the the desert biome grave no graves um but one gentleman earlier it won't let me scroll up oh there we go all right el pato de El Patode Barba says human skeletons. So here we are. We're pretty close, I think. Well, not quite, but we'll we'll get them. So no pyramids, no haystacks. Um, it looks like we've got an impaled head on a spike. And I think they made this object just for the Attila the Hun campaign, so I don't think we're gonna do that.
Uhu Koyedo says, even when there is dry land, desert beach, mangroves, and other trees at the coast are not uncommon. That's true. Yep, that's that's true. And I actually Googled this. Let me show you guys some of the pictures that I found. So I actually looked this up, mangrove forest estuary. And uh, there are lots of relevant results. I mean, like, even in the Louisiana bayou area, like, there's there's mangrove trees everywhere. And it's, a, it's considered kind of an estuary because the salt water is mixing with the fresh water. So... I had lots of lots of results for mangrove forest in an estuary, essentially. El Pantode Barba says, I agree with who Coil22 about the location of the map. A fictitious archipelago with islands big enough to be desertic. Yes. So these are fun. These are fun to do. Like there's, there's all kinds of neat animals and plants and other things that are adapted to extreme environments. It's really entertaining what nature comes up with if you take the time to look. So here's kind of an underwater picture of what the mangrove looks like. Can you imagine all of your I mean, it's it's kind of funny to look at it like this, right? It's it's even the right color for the mangrove shallows in AOE two, and um, can you imagine like your villagers just walking around in this all day, or like your knights or your your cross your army of crossbows sl sloshing through this to get to an enemy woodline and pick off villagers. It's just kind of funny, and then they build a castle here too. All right, um, no impaled corpses, please. No, no ice, please. Indian ruins. I don't know. Is there an opportunity to put some Indian? Well, probably not. Because this is a natural area. Indian statues. No, too civilization. Too much civilization. Too much civilization. Too much civilization. Okay, so we've got map revealers, too. And this is something that I want you to think about, um, Cesar. Do you want... I would add crocodiles, dolphins, vultures, and storks as an equivalent of something like flamingos or herons. Ooh, that's true. So, Cesar, do you want to reveal the map? Do you want to reveal any portions of the map? So this is something for you guys to discuss and think about is like if you've got two players duking it out on this island for the you know for the purposes of your competition do you care if they are completely aware of what these mangrove shallows look like I mean it probably doesn't matter but it could be a nice touch you know get bored doing an FC build be like oh yeah look at that cute little mangrove forest out there I don't know okay we we looked at the mountains already we looked at the Nubian pyramids, no stone heads, no pagodas, no paths, no pavilions. So we could have some plants. Plants are a good they're a good staple anywhere you can you can pretty much put some plants down. Uh, bush green. We could put down some bush green as well. Plant dead. So definitely plant dead. Um, there's a plant with flowers too, actually, kind of like that. But we wouldn't be able to do very many of them because again, it's it's a desert. But deserts can have some pretty yet. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to talking to you on Discord, Pyramid. I That was one of the sad things about leaving Twitch. I was like, Pyramid is such a great regular on Twitch. I'm going to lose him. 
but I did have to leave Twitch to go to YouTube. Exactly, says Cesar. Uh, Cesar. We can make it so that um, in the case of, you know, your normal competitive start on the islands, we can make it so that outside of the islands is explored, while inside is not. So that is something to consider. Now, deserts can have, like, flowers in them. Um, but it's probably not going to be very common. You can even, like, put flowers around the fruit bushes or something. I don't know. It's something to consider. I'm going to write it down. But, again, we're going to have to be careful with it. Um, so plant... Oh, there's plant jungle, too. I don't want to put I don't want to put too many of these down, but we'll we'll write it down anyway because I want to know about it. Because when I go back through the uh, spreadsheet, I'm not going to know what to look for. So this is kind of our opportunity to bring up all the objects and see how they look. Cesar likes the idea of okay, the ex exterior being explored, which we can enforce, and the interior of the islands not being explored. Okay, we've got rainforest plant as well. Wait a second, how is rainforest plant different from jungle plant? Okay, and it indeed is. We'll write down plant rainforest too, but I don't think we're going to use it. Plant shrub green okay plant tropical underbrush And then we can just have regular under, underbrush. And then, of course, we've got plant weeds. All right. Um, Pulinary Castle. How many of these do you want, Cesar? How many of these do you want scattered across your, your map? Okay, quarry we don't need. Temple. Relics, of course, but that's a that's a given. Hukoidal says you could also have crocodiles with food on them or box turtles on land, because in AoE2 we don't have too many American animals which would live on those islands. Well, I you know, I was actually thinking. I could do like box turtles like this is this is normal terrain right here like you could build it on this but it looks like a tidal pool so I was actually thinking of putting box turtles and fish in here as like an alternate food source maybe replace some of the food that you would get off of from a boar or something we have to be careful it has to be competitive do the Hindustani still have because that's they were they're what the Indians became do they still have some massive um, fishing bonus? Alright, anyway, back to other. So we have to be careful about that, but yeah, these tidal pools are filled with life. So I definitely want to have some life in here. Alright, where were we? Uh, we were plant weeds. Ro rocks. Okay. So, what do you guys think about these rock beach and rock jungle formations? I guess the rock jungle doesn't really make any sense because the air is so dry that you're not really going to get these mosses to grow here. Oh, one of the one of the other new sibs has a fish bonus. All right, let's take a look at that tech tree real quick. Make sure that I understand how much it is. 
Because, honestly, you know, like, the Mongols is what, 40% or something? As long as we don't go crazy and put, like, nothing but fish near the player town center, it's gonna be okay. Uh, so let's see what's our baseline here for Mongols, which I think represent an extreme here. Hunters work 40% faster. And considering that... Well, I actually have it up right here. So hunters work 40% faster. And if you get three deer, 42% of the food that's assigned to each player is huntable food. So the Mongols are basically working 40% faster on this 1100 food. The Franks are working, what, 15% faster on the forage, and the Britons are working 20% faster on the shepherding. So as long as the fish is somewhere around the same size as these, you know, as these pies here, like this Mongol is just insane, right? It's not only is it the largest bonus, but it's the largest amount of food under the town center. So it's, it's huge. Um, all right, which sieve is the one with... The Dravidians, maybe? Fishermen and fishing ships carry plus 15. That's not the same thing as a work rate. It helps. Um, maybe it's another one. Bengalis? I don't own the expansion, so I'm not... I'm not too familiar with these. So we looked at the Bengalis, the Dravidians, the Gurjaras. Start with two forage bushes, can garrison docks with fishing ships. So is that, was that, um, fish carry, was that fish carrying, was that who, was that what you were talking about with the Bengalis carrying? No, it's not the Bengalis, whoops. It is the Dravidians carrying more on their fish. Is that what you were talking about? Maybe this is, yeah, maybe this is the only one that we have to watch out for. Cesar says, the Ark looks like La Portada, La Portada, a natural object in Antofagasta, where Zoe lives. Um, okay. Is there an estuary in Antofagasta? So we like... We like these arched rocks or we don't. I I don't I personally don't think that they fit. I think it's the 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 rocks are a little too dark and gray. And I can't really explain how these would form. They almost look like some kind of limestone formation. I don't know. What do you you guys can let me know if you disagree. Um now, we've got rock one, though, which is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit tanner. And does rock one, you know, does rock one fit better with this? Um, this rock two looks pretty good. It's a brown, It's it's got more of this brownish color to it. And then the rock beach, here's the rock beach for contrast. So let's take a look at all these rocks and kind of, you know, choose the ones that we think fit the best. Uh, all right, yes, yeah, so these rock formations, these brown rock formations, we were going to use to form some little tidal pools here. But we have to be careful because they block objects. If there are no dark mountains nearby. Yeah, we have the, the brown mountains. So rock... Rock one and rock two. But we still need to allow people to land from the outside in the case that we have a low resources configuration and the players have a nomad start on these mangrove shallows. But somehow the light brown sandstone in the water are also not ideal. You're talking about this case right here? Yeah, I agree it's missing something. Hmm. 
rock two for those pawns? Let's see. It does fit the DLC Desert Gravel a little bit better. So ideally they would kind of look something like this. But we'd have to be we have to be sort of careful because we don't want players to be able to wall to the edge here either. We might not be able to make these pawns happen, I don't know. Or if we do, they might be smaller, kind of like that. We'll have to see. But I, I really love the idea of making little tidal pools, though. We don't really care about blocking too much stuff. Um, okay. Yeah, this... They, they almost look more like termite mounds. And I think maybe they used to be called termite mounds or something like that. Okay, no to the Roman ruins, the rubble. Rugs. We could uh, confuse everybody and put rugs around the town center. Make them think that uh, Cruzini made the map. Oh, definitely sea rocks. And the sea rocks will be good because sea rocks will not block landings. So we could like use the sea rocks to fill in these gaps to make it you know look like that rocky coastline. Okay, he sent me a link about... Um, La Portada. And we've got two types of sea rocks, so we definitely want sea rocks. Sea rocks two. Ooh, shipwrecks. Shipwrecks could be fun. Uh, I think we need shipwrecks. I think we have to have at least two shipwrecks, right? Otherwise, how would we be able to explain how the players got on these islands? <laughs> Some rugs as towels for this villager's summer vacation. So you know what we could do? We could have the shipwrecks, and then we could have the rugs around the shipwreck. So that's where they were basking in the sun, and then they found out that their enemy landed on the same island, and so they went and built this town. And uh, now they're going to wage war. And we got two different types of shipwreck. So, all right, shipwrecks surrounded by rugs. And then. Yeah, we got shore fish, obviously. Deep fish. Shore fish. The villagers' summer vacation. All right, yep. Now here are the skeletons. So we could have... What do you guys want for these skeletons? Maybe we'll have a bunch of skeletons in the middle of the island, or maybe not on the outside so much. Probably on the big islands for the skeletons, but I'll write down skeletons in general. Shipwreck with a gold pile in it, surrounded by rugs and skeletons guarded by crocodiles. Ooh. Um, that could be interesting. So, let me write down skeletons. So maybe there could be like a, sh you know, just a shipwreck with, with gold somewhere out in the neutral portion of the map, and it's surrounded by crocodiles to guard it. But the thing is, we got to be careful, because if we start putting crocodiles on the outside of the map, then um, if we give players a nomad start out here, then somebody's villager could get attacked by the crocodile, before they have their town center up and before they're able to get loom or protect the villager. So we will have to be careful. But we could certainly put crocodiles in here. The other thing though that we could do is if we really did feel strongly about putting crocodiles on the exterior portion of the map, we could not necessarily start players with villagers, but we could start them with the um, with the packed town center that I made made. 
like the ox cart that when it dies, it spawns villagers. That's a possibility. Because the crocodiles won't attack it, and then you can just go somewhere where the crocodiles aren't. Delete your ox wagon, and three villagers will spawn. You can set them defensive, then village... Ooh, that's true. That's true. Um... Okay, so we got the skeletons defensive so that the villagers can run away from the crocodiles. No snowy mountains. No stele. Stone we're obviously going to put. No stumps. No stupas. No targets. No temple ruins. Um... All right, and then we have a bunch of trees here that we can choose from. We may not necessarily put these trees as objects, but maybe we, you know, think these trees just look good with the map in general. I don't think we want any acacia trees. Uh, ban there's bamboo trees here. I don't know if we want bamboo or if we want... Okay, we got baobabs here. Birch probably don't fit this biome. Cypress trees probably don't fit. Dead trees probably don't fit. Dragon trees. I mean, it's an African theme tree. I don't know where we would put them. Italian pines. Who Coyotl says, I just had an idea. Maybe not for this map, but in general, a ship. If it is deleted, spawn some objects, including villagers. Yes, that could be done. Actually, that would be a good idea. It doesn't have to be the ox wagon. It could just be a ship. It would have to be a hero ship. It would have to be a hero ship because otherwise, every time that that ship was built and then destroyed, it would create all those villagers. So we couldn't do it to like a regular fire galley or something because every time you lose a you lose a fire galley, you lose three villagers. But that absolutely could be done. And I think that would be a really fun idea. So you can you can start the players like randomly somewhere on the mangrove shallows and they can just sail to wherever they wanted to be. But the thing is is that if we gave them the ship, then they would technically be able to start on one of these islands. But then again, they also wouldn't be able to get off it either. So maybe you don't want to start on one of these islands. Maybe you want to start out here so that you could go to that island later or you could go to more than one island when you're able to build transport ships so jungle trees uh, I don't think necessarily the best fit here we've already got mangroves and we've got desert palms autumn oak oak Olive trees. So Cesar, stop me if you like any of these trees and want to see any of these trees like appear on the map somewhere in their own little region. Because we can make that happen. Alright, rainforest. So I definitely want these reeds though. I'm sorry. This the we're gonna have reeds for straggler trees. Kind of like something like that. And we're gonna have reeds out here. And you're gonna like it. So we're going to have tree reeds. Tree A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and then K, and then TD, and then L. Um, vases could be interesting. Yeah, maybe we'll do vases. I'll write it down. Vases are important for deserts. And then no wells, I don't think. The, it doesn't sit well with me. So units, 
Our predator was going to be... Oh, were we going to put camels down? We could put neutral patches of camels just hanging out. It's something to think about. Um, could write it down. Camels. So probably not deer, right? Probably not deer. But maybe ostriches? Not dire wolves. Llamas? You think llamas are more adapted to desert biomes than goats? I was thinking either goats or geese. Because it's an island, right? And uh, geese can geese kind of get around. So it's up to you. Or we could do a combination of the two. Um, geese or goats. So we have the opportunity to put some hawks down, but I think we want to put vultures down instead. You see llamas every day in the Atacama Desert? All right. He's from South America. He likes his llamas. That's fine. Put some llamas down. Llamas. Well, llama is basically going to mean that this map is guaranteed to be from the Americas, which I'm actually fine with. Seems reasonable. So, um, do you have llamas and foxes? I don't know if we have foxes. The closest thing that we have to a fox is actually a wolf. So, a macaw? He's like a... A tropical bird, if you will. I don't know if macaws are supposed to appear in this biome, though. But I'll write it down with a question mark. We could put a ninja down. Look at that, ninjas. Norse warrior. Okay. Uh, so what are we going to do for... What are we going to do for huntable food here? We've got... I, I wasn't thinking we would do deer. I guess we could do deer. I was thinking ostriches, maybe? They're more desert animals. What other options do we have? Do you really see big flightless birds? Do you have big flightless birds in Chile? Okay, we got pigs, probably not pigs. A melee Ratha and a ranged Ratha. Probably don't have rhinoceroses. Ukoidal says, I don't think llamas or goats naturally live on any island. So if we don't take it that seriously, the herdable type does not matter too much. That's true. These llamas or these goats would have been imported anyway. So it would have been just as easy for them to import either one or geese or sheep or anything. They would have brought those goats with them when they landed. Vultures. Snow leopards. That wouldn't make any sense. Okay, yes. Storks. This is what we want. We want lots of storks. Let me write that down. It is an estuary, and storks make 100% complete sense. Oh, this is the Therizdi, or whatever it is. Therizidae. This, look at how big this ship is. It's scary. 
It's almost a, it's bigger than a turtle ship. Okay, we got tigers not going to want to live in this desert area. And vultures, of course, because it's a desert biome. So I'll write down vulture as well. Um, hunting crocodiles could make more sense. Geese probably would be the best. If any animals, I believe sailors would have brought pigs with them because they are easier to feed. That's true. Pigs will eat anything. However, pigs are also very greedy, and they, they get hungry quickly. Water buffalo? Probably not an option. I might live out here in the mangrove area, actually. Let me know what you guys think about water buffaloes. Okay, wild boar, wild camel, and wild horse. I did write that down. Oh, and there's zebra. Zebra is another option, too. All right. And did I miss the crocodile somewhere? Oh, cows. Crocodile, yes. Okay, so we got to make a decision, Cesar. We need a relatively fair distribution of huntable meat and forage bushes and um, shepherding meat, meat that you can just command to come onto your town center and then kill. So those are the three things that we need. We're going to have some fishable meat under the town center or really close to the town center. So we won't necessarily need as much. But we're going to need one of each of those types. We're going to need some type of sheep. It doesn't have to be sheep specifically. We're going to need some type of um, boar. We're going to need some type of deer. And we're going to need uh, some type of forage bushes. Now we have the fruit bushes. So we basically need to decision what type of sheep are we using. What type of boar are we using. Because you want one boar. Unless we don't do boar. And then we don't have to worry about it. And then what type of deer do you want? And you really have to make the decision and let me know. And I will assign those animal types uh, to players. And then we could put, if you wanted, if you don't like any of those choices and you like the idea of a huntable crocodile or something, that could be interesting. Maybe we could put like some huntable crocodiles underneath the town center so that you'd have to be really, you'd have to not be paying attention to lose a villager to it. And um, maybe we could even change the amount of HP they have so a villager could kill them easily. Um, so let me know if there's any acceptable types of animals here that you want to use that you think are believable and fit the biome. And if not, then we'll come up with something more creative. Let me see if I can bring up the picture here that you sent me. La Portada in Antifogasta. All right, let's bring this up. Oh yeah, there is an arched rock here. It is a natural arch rock which welcomes visitors at the northern entrance. Okay. Oh. That's true. I forgot about that. We could we could upgrade a boar 
I like that actually. We could upgrade a boar to look like a crocodile. So you basically hunt the crocodile the same way that you would a boar. Okay. All right. So based on what Hoo Hoo Coil is saying then, um, we'll give Cesar his llamas. We'll have the llamas be the sheep. We will upgrade the deer to geese, so the geese act like deer. And then we'll upgrade the boar to crocodiles. Yeah, that was a really great stream yesterday, Ronald Rage. I saw that Sito followed you. He's a super nice guy. He's raided me before. He um he really helps out the smaller streamers, which I appreciate. Yep. Yeah, I saw. So what do you think about that, Cesar? Llamas that they brought over. Okay. So the crocodiles will be lureable like boars. That's a great idea, Hoo Hoo Coyotal. So you could lure the lure the crocodile in like you would a boar. And um and then we'll upgrade the ostriches to geese so that you push the geese in. And then we'll give you llamas, just because you love llamas. <laughs> um, and it would stand to reason that the people that land on the island will bring llamas with them. I'm actually really... I don't know. It's just... I'm not, I know I'm not, I'm not from that part of the world, so I don't know anything. But... You think about all the wool that's on a llama and like all of the all of the insulation that a llama is carrying around for them to live in the Atacama Desert. Maybe the Atacama Desert isn't that hot actually. Maybe that's the reason why. It's just difficult it's difficult for me to put that together like some animal that's bundled up in this really thick wool coat lives in the desert. But not all deserts are 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 warm. Okay. It may be confusing to people. That's true. But I think if it's explained in, in advance, it should be okay. And we're going to put it back here. Oh, the Atacama Desert is at a very high altitude. That explains it. No, no, it's not your fault. It's just me not knowing about the Atacama Desert because I'm, fr I'm from a place that's very far away. No, it's no worries. Let's look at some images. Yep, there he is. It's just a llama. He's just standing there in the Atacama Desert. Look at that. Hey, Jaw Zero Zero. We are discussing like the objects now that we want to include in this map. And there they are. There are the llamas, and they're standing in the Atacama Desert. But the Atacama Desert is actually in a high elevation, and this is where llamas live too. And it's cooler in the higher elevations, so the llamas don't care that it's a desert because it's not too hot. Oh, this llama, look at this llama has earrings. That's cute. Yeah, people really love their llamas. The last time that I was in the presence of a llama, it tried to spit on me. There you go. The pro the propaganda poster right there. The Atacama Desert in Chile with a llama in the front. All right, so that sounds good. Oh, look at this. There's like a little stream or something or a spring and the llamas are drinking. That's nice. Okay. 
goes from sea level to 6,000 meters above sea level, which is a lot. All right, so I think we've we basically have kind of beat this to a pulp here about what objects we like and which ones we don't like. Uh, so let's, I guess we'll try, we'll try it now. We'll try, we'll start putting the objects in. For that, we're going to need Zetnus's definitive constants list, which we do have. So this So we'll, we can go down and we can look up the number that's associated with each of these in case they're not predefined. So let's get cracking on it because it's not going to do it by itself. And we spent a lot of time talking about what objects would look good. Okay. So what are we going to put down first? Well, I think that I want to try to get these title pools right first, because I think this is going to be the trickiest part. This will decrease the number of places that you could land, I guess, too. But it could be OK. So we'll see if we can make that work. It could end up just being like a box, though, which would be somewhat underwhelming. OK. So we're actually going to ignore the town center for now and we're going to place a first object maybe 647 so we're going to call it off grid it's going to be 647 it's not going to have any second object and we're going to put 9320 so more of these groups than we'll ever be able to fit uh, grouping type loose scaling to map size and we're going to place on um, water non-interactable. And we're not going to force the placement. And the big thing is we want a large temp min distance group placement, so maybe like 16 or something. And we could give them like a second object of flag A, just so we can see where these are going. Set circular placement command does quite well with circular placement, but probably better with a bigger radius. I do not believe that it works for actor areas. Let's check. Zetnus's handbook. I think I've got the latest one. If it does work for... Changes min distance to players and max distance to players to use circular. Euclidean distance rather than a square radius. I don't necessarily know if this is the right word here, but that's fine. This prevents resources on the diagonal from being very far away. This probably should be used for most player objects to improve resource spawns. So we don't use min distance to players and max distance to players, so therefore this command does not affect us. If this command ever worked with actor areas though, I would definitely add it to my script. Okay, and so we got that. This is probably going to run super fast. We just ran this, and let's find object auto scribe v8. We've got v5 here left over from a from the template. Okay. So that should run properly. And once it says writing to file, 
we'll know that it's done because it takes it writes to file very quickly and we indeed have the else configuration here so that's good all right so it's all set so now we should have these flags basically scattered all over this non-interactable water and those are going to represent the center of our tidal pools Oh, whoops, we put set place for every player. Um, all right. But glad that those are appearing. Yeah, they're player signed, player owned. We want um, neutral Gaia unconvertible. Actually, I don't think you can convert those placeholders anyway, so I'll just make them convertible and save ourselves some lines of code. Okay, it's all set. So here we go. Spacing is somewhat large. We might wish to decrease that spacing. But I think it's worth moving on at this point. And each one of these should have, yeah, each one of these has its flag. Even this one has a flag here. All right, so do we have to put, because I just want these actually to appear next to well, shoot, because if we're going to be avoiding, if we're going to be avoiding this mangrove shallow here by like one, then that means that we need to completely fill these mangrove shallows with placeholders for them to avoid, and that's going to be really awkward. Well, all right, let's see how it looks like this. Oh, um, I know. We'll put placeholders on this on these rings of beach, and then we'll avoid those by at least one. This ring of beach is a very small amount of terrain, so it doesn't matter if we take up the whole thing. So let's do that. So we're actually going to place these on... Oops. beach and we're not going to have any Tentman distance group placement and I think I'm going to make it on grid actually and it's going to be object number 278 and it'll be predefined in our script anyway so I'm not going to define it there yeah it's already defined so we don't even need that All right, and then we'll add another one. Second object, flag B. And this is going to take over that role. We're going to want it on WNI, but we're going to have it avoid yeah, we're going to have it avoid whatever's in A5 by 1. So we want this here. I'll give it the borders. Okay. So let's give that a try.
Okay, it's running. It's thinking about it. Ah, oh, right. It's going to be there, too. Hmm. I mean, this is a giant size, though. So, and it seemed to generate okay. However, if I, if I requested an avoidance of two, how would it do? Because if I requested an avoidance of two, it's distance two. Then I could actually give these a min distance group placement or attempt min distance group placement of one, and there would be significantly fewer of them. So we could try that. Okay, good. I think these are in the appropriate locations approximately. So now we can we can dial this up for their own internal spacing. We can give them an internal spacing of like 8 or something like that. So space those by 8. And then for the next row, we're going to do rock 2. And I think rock 2 is 928, if I remember correctly. Let's see. 928. No. That's dead Shambar die. What's rock 2? Thirteen twenty three. These are also going to be neutral Gaia convertible. That's fine. We'll put more on the map than we could ever possibly need. Copy a lot of that and then delete a lot of it. And there's not any there's not going to be any set type of actually let's put them on WNI for now. No distance. Now let's see here. So we want them to be within, let's say, two, but avoid by one. So we'll have them avoid by one, and we'll change this to A6. So they're going to, let's copy that and then paste it here. It's going to be A6 again. So they're going to be placed within two of whatever object is in row two, but outside of one. So we'll see if this is an appropriate radius for them. Save. And let's just let's just run that and see how we how we're at. Haha, <laughs> Cookie Pirate is here. Everyone give me your cookies now. Cookie Pirate, it's your turn in Access and Allies. Go take your turn, if you haven't already. All right. So let's see if we get those rocks to form properly. Ooh.
He's playing Cookie Clicker, you guys. So it sort of works. Um, I, what? Let's try removing that restriction. And it should be simple enough that we can just actually go in here and just remo remove it ourselves. Wherever the object's auto scribe is. Oh no! How did? Oh, I bet the program. I bet the program removes that um, collapsing. Well, good thing we're not really working in that area anymore. This map looks really cool. Thank you. It looks exactly like the kind of place Cookie Pirate would like to do, would like to do battle. And let's remove this terrain to place on right here. We didn't remove it in the spreadsheet, which is kind of our master file, but we'll see how it how how it impacts it. It would mean it would mean that you could basically wall though to here, which I don't necessarily like. I mean, but then again, I mean there's some opportunities, but it's not it's not perfect. So we could put actually a blocker down. And I think maybe we should on this beach terrain, this URB as it's called, that prevents these rocks from coming down here. But this map was actually inspired by the map in warships called Estuary Cookie Pirate. So we're trying to get these tidal pools to work. And we need them to have this organic feel to them. And right now they basically just look like a bunch of rock boxes. Actually, if these are off grid, I don't know, is this going to, it's going to, if it's going to work. Thing is, is if I put the blockers, if I put the blockers along this this rock beach terrain here, then there's nothing stopping it from like showing up right here is the problem. The other possibility is that I could do like walkable rock terrain, like Sea Rocks 1. Let's see how that looks. Maybe that'll be less intrusive. I think it's called Sea Rocks 1. Let's see. Yep, just Sea Rocks 1 or Sea Rocks 2. And so we'll try that. Okay. Could be a little bit better. And we could even mix the rock types. So we could put we could put rock two at 1323, but we could put like spacings between them. Let's try that. All right, so we're gonna have, we can't define sea rocks as 1323 actually. So let's have rock two and we'll do, we'll put it on water non-interactable and we'll give it like a spacing. Uh, let's, let's try giving it three and see what happens. 
and then we'll maybe repeat this a couple of times. And then we'll copy all of this data here. And we'll change this, delete this, and we'll say CROX1. And OK, so that's good. Except we'll change this to 2. And then we'll copy this again and paste it down here. And this is going to be CROX2. And we'll save that. And then we'll get rid of this. And that should fill in the rest of the way. So I think this is going to work. Pretty sure CROX2 is defined in, yeah, it's defined in the same way. So let's run it. And see what we get. Oh, um, forgot something. These are not going to be restricted to non-interactable water. Now we can run it. Oops. Okay, writing to file, it's done. Let's see what we got. Oh, interesting. These aren't properly centered around it. Oh, well. Yeah, we might need an on-grid placeholder for that. Oh. What do you guys think? Maybe a few more big rocks? Or maybe like a regular rock? It's looking good. And we're going to need a lot more like rocks just in to fill in this space here. But I think the first step is to make this an on-grid placeholder. So let's do that. Oh, it is an on grid placeholder. Well, you could have fooled me. These rocks will help lighten this up, I think. <clears throat> Okay, so maybe we'll insert some rows above. Well, we'll insert one row above, delete that. So we'll do rock two, and then we'll just do rock. Ooh, no, I did not try that. That's a great idea. Um, let me write this down. Rubble under rocks. This is why I love it when you come to my stream, Hoo Hoo Coyotal. This is why I'm always begging you to come to my stream. You've always got these great ideas. So, yes, let's do that. I'm going to add this rock here as well. And I'm going to copy all of this data. So it's also going to be on water, not interactable. And the Tentman distance group placement is going to be three as well. I think that that will be fine. And we'll see how that looks. And then, then while, that's, while this is generating, I'm going to go and look up the constant for the one by one rubble. Yeah, so we'll, we'll run this real quick.
Okay, so rubble one by one. Is it really defined by that? That's funny. All right. Uh, so it is rubble one x one, just like that. Okay. So it seems like there's not enough room for the traditional rock to spawn. What? No, surely it should be able to spawn. What did we overlook? What did we for what did we miss? What did we forget about? Oh, we didn't, duh, we didn't number it. Okay. Oh, that would explain why it, it didn't process. Oops. And then maybe a second object for all these, we can put the, the rubble one by one. Who Coital says there are actually many kinds of rubble that can be used. Each building that can be destroyed has its rubble, but you have to set the decay rate as very high. Hmm. Yeah, that could be a good idea, Cookie Pirate. All right, well, let's just try rubble one x1 just like that as I've written down as a second object I might have to do it the other way I might have to put the rubble first and actually the yeah I, I think I'm gonna have to do it the other way let me oops I think I'm gonna have to put these down first or the, these rubbles down first And then the rocks as second objects. Okay. Yeah, anything to give it like a gravelly, coarse, rocky, rocky edge that is not wallable. I am all for. All right, it's all set. So what, you put the buildings down, hoo-hoo, and then you destroy them with effect amount, and then you set the decay rate very high, so it basically you don't see the destruction animation, and then they have just their own kind of rubble in place. You can definitely see the wood there, but that may not necessarily be a bad thing. Because you could say that it was like, it was driftwood. And we, you can see that we have a different, the different rock formation there, which is good. There's an ID for each rubble. Oh, so when you set the de decay rate to a very high number, you mean it makes it so the rubble doesn't disappear. Oh, it should be in here. Yes? Rubble. Fence rubble. Barracks dark rubble. You're talking about all these rubbles here?
do you believe that any of these rubbles would be you know the um the stone wall rubble might be good because it's rocky but I would think it would be filled with rocks anyway and I don't want too much wood on my beach so if we can replace Some are black, some gray, etc. Right. What about the aqueduct rubble? Well, the aqueduct is an unused building. So let's try 1522. Oops. All right. Um, Fifteen twenty-two, because the aqueduct, as as far as I understand it, in the scenario editor, is essentially just a wall that's like a hero. It's like a hero wall unit. Okay, and an aqueduct should be mostly stone and no wood, so we can try it. And then we'll have to set the decay rate of that rubble. We'll have to set the number to be very high. So it takes forever to decay. Which I think we can do with effect amount. Okay. Ooh. And we got more rocks. You just have to look. I haven't looked at all of them yet, but I have used some of them which had straw, leaves, or branches in them as an understory. Now units can still walk through that rubble, right? Yes. So that's good. And everywhere else we can put the sea rocks, I suppose. On this non-interactable water. Hey, Cesar. No, you're being very helpful. It's uh, it's great that you're here. Thanks for joining us. I don't expect you to spend all day here. It's fine. It's good to have you. The rubble can be built on. The rubble can be built on, but the terrain cannot be. So this is uh, unbuildable terrain here. So that players cannot... They can't simply wall to the edge of the island. So they can't they can't build here. So even though there are objects here and there's rubble there and there's like stone there, they can't wall to that. Right. <coughs> so now I think that we're going to put a lot of these big rock objects here. We're gonna have this aqueduct rubble underneath them. 
but they're going to have that spacing. And then we'll put a lot of these other sea rocks in between. So let's sort of, I guess we'll just sort of experiment with that and see what we can do. You can also modify the radius of units via effect amount to make them passable or not. Don't know whether it works for all units, but you can make uh, passable force that way, for example, when the trees have radius zero. Interesting. Yeah, I, I thought that might be possible, but I was steering away from it because I didn't want to be too confusing. But it is definitely something worth considering. Cesar says, I'll be back in one hour or so. Okay. Well, I'll probably be here, still making the map. So, let's have these now. And we'll copy these over. I think a lot of this data is good. And we've got that tempman distance group placement and we're going to be putting this on WNI basically to fill up the rest of that space. We'll have maybe spacing all one there. Well, change that to one and we'll actually change that to one as well so that Sea Rocks 2 get some get some love cuz they've kind of been left out. Because usually off-grid units leave a 0.5 tile gap next to them, which cannot be walled. So if they are off-grid, they need a different radius. All right. So now we will tell these, these rocks that we're putting down. Um, we'll copy this basic command here. And we'll paste it. Okay, except we want these to avoid flag B now, which is in two, and we want them to avoid it by, let's say, three, so that we're not intersecting our tidal pools. And then we'll copy that, and we'll paste it here. And we'll save. Okay. Oh, we should specify no force placement as well. It shouldn't matter. It should just assume no if there's nothing there. But we'll save that anyway. Okay, it's thinking. Okay, it's all set. So let's see what we put down. Mandatum. Ooh. All right. I think we could, it seems like we have a little bit of avoidance here, almost like a, a, a reservation of sorts. It doesn't want to get too close. But I do overall like this coastline. I think we need to blend it a bit into into the island itself. It looks like it's mostly just hanging out in the water. But we're getting closer to achieving the effect that the effect that I was looking for all along. And what I like about this is that you can still reach your destination with a transport ship. Or at least you should be able to. Let's check. Transport ship. Yeah, so you can you can sail right through here. I 
should be able to. So you should be able to sail right through. So you've got options to get to the center. That's something that we will we'll test that tonight. Maybe there's a different rubble that would be very appropriate. Okay. Oh, okay, so these sea rocks, they had to be on WNI, that's why. Because if they if they weren't, then they would be basically be placed anywhere that was outside of that boundary. So now we're going to put more sea rocks down on URB, on Buildable Rock Beach. So let's copy these along. And we need more sea rocks. And we're going to put URB. And we have to restrict this terrain because we're not putting them within a distance to something. Okay. And so that should fill it in the rest of the way. Okay, so we should have even more stuff now filling in this and this. Hmm, what do you guys think? It's almost like their avoidance is a little bit too large. It's like they're avoiding the these boxes by too much. Maybe I decrease that avoidance by one and run it again, and then also increase their spacing. Make that little little bit of a tweak. So, oh yeah, they're avoiding by three. Let's have them avoid by two. And I'm going to increase this by one. All right, it's thinking. It's done. There we go. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is too much? Do you think this is too little? I think it's just right. Hmm. So 
the unbuildable rock terrain here. You think it looks a little too cluttered. Well, we could this to two and one, and this to three and two. Let's see what happens. I would like that contrast between the densities of the rocks. We didn't have much for rock, though. We had sea rocks one, sea rocks two, rock one, and rock two. We felt that the, um, the desert rocks didn't really look good in this context. We could actually define the player start first and then have, because I want to put some rocks down on this um, on this terrain as well. All right. I like that. Especially if we made these flags look invisible. So we'll put some regular rocks on this desert gravel here. And we'll probably put them within a certain distance of these flags too. But first things first, I think we are going to define the town center start location so that we can put rocks here but get them to avoid. Because if we tell it to just go crazy, it'll fill this entire space with rocks, which we don't want. Okay, insert rows above. First object off grid. Let's copy these actually. Six forty seven, second object, town center, one, two, three, etc. Okay, and it's not going to be placed on any particular type of beach terrain at all. You don't need that. And yeah, that's good. So this is going to be player signed, player owned. We don't need that. We don't need this. And that's fine. So now we can get some more of these sea rocks down. Fourteen, fifteen, and we can tell these sea rocks to spawn on non-navigable rock beach, and then we will tell them to avoid three by two. That's fine, but we'll also tell them to avoid the town center. Cut 
copy that. Okay. And we need to tell them to avoid the town center by a lot, otherwise they're going to get way too close. So let's have them avoid by 8. Uh, maybe a little more, maybe like 10. Okay. Okay, it's all set. Let's see. So we do get some stuff to be created here. Oh, maybe 10 is a little too much. No, 10 is not enough. Look at that. Unless we unless we also created them along this desert terrain and then told them to avoid, which I think is what we're going to have to do ultimately. Also, we have two town centers here, which is not allowed. Two town centers there, so we'll have to address that. So, moral of the story is... It's both too much and too little at the same time. So, let's first of all fix the... There's no scaling type. It's player assigned, player owned. One town's... Oh! Right, in my original code, I bet I'm putting down town centers, aren't I? Where's the objects generation? Begin objects auto scribe. End objects auto scribe. Yep, there it is. Extra town center. Well, we will not allow that. All right. So that's taken care of. That's a win. Ukoidal says, I also think it's a bit too many rocks. I know you often put much more objects than many other people, but I would probably only put half of it. Um, okay. Let me see if I can decrease the density of these rocks then by a little bit. So we'll change that to 3, we'll change that to 4, we'll change that to 3, we'll change that to 4. And we'll decrease the density in that way. Let's see what impact that has. This is on non-interactable water. Alright, we need to insert a row above. 1, 2, we'll delete all these. So, we're going to get some on grid flag C. The rest of this we'll hold on to. And these will be put on DLC desert gravel. Okay, and we're going to space these apart by like four, and I think that should be okay. And then we will tell, ooh, yeah, we'll tell this to avoid 
whatever's in A6. Oops, whatever's in A6. There we go. By five. Save that and run it. <laughs> oh, we never put that. Oh, we did. Okay. We got flag C's to make sure that these placeholders appear properly. Go to giant size. Okay, so we have. We have these placeholder flags out, and we're still able to get some rock spawn on this beach terrain here. Hmm. So some of these are on this unbuildable rock beach that are not avoiding these flags. And maybe it's fine. I should probably do a better job with it. Um, I should probably put some redundancies in for this green water masking over this unbuildable rock beach here. So I think I'm I'm going to have these rocks that are being built, that are being placed on the unbuildable rock beach. I'm going to have them avoid these flags as well. That could be that could be tricky, but we'll see how it looks. In other words, it might not produce the effect that I'm looking for. So it's these ones right here. Not less dense, but not the whole coastline covered. Um, uh, it could be tricky. All right. So this. And what? 
these are the spacing on these is four so the minimum would have to be five five and two or yeah five and two it's avoiding four I don't think a natural beach would have rocks reaching out the same distance everywhere. Mm. All right, let me run this to see if this has the effect. While this is running, we'll I'll look. What natural effects would cause yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Maybe, because I specifically I wanted the tidal pools, and I did the tidal pools first. And then I filled up the rest of, yeah, I think I see what you're saying now. I filled up the rest of these rock beaches. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to do. I'll create another placeholder. I'll tell it to avoid these flags here, and it'll end up like somewhere in the middle. And then I'll tell the rocks to avoid those placeholders so that they're like denser here and here, but there's not as much stuff here and it's got a more jagged feel. I think that could be a good thing to try. All right, so let's see how we did on this one. Yeah, I don't know. That's not really going in the direction that I want anyway. So I think I'm going to get rid of that. Let's... Let's delete these. And let's delete this one. For now, we might end up making a new one, who knows. So we go back to this. So we have Aqueduct Rubble on Sea Rocks 1, and these ones are the ones that were bound. Okay. And these are the ones that were not bound within a certain distance. So we actually need to delete these as well. So we'll we'll do that. But first, let's delete these three. And then let's clear some of this data out. So we're going to create the same type of placeholder. Except we're going to be using flag B here. So we're actually going to copy this data. All right, so it's essentially going to be the same as except we want flag C. Same as this one. Same distance. We're going to be avoiding two by two and we're going to be avoiding this one by 8. So this should basically take it and it should, instead of them lining up like this, they'll line up like this now. They'll, they'll mesh. So it'll basically just be rotated out of phase, if you will. And then we'll kind of use these as an epicenter for avoidance for subsequent rocks that we put down um, in that non-interactable water area. So let's make sure that we get these placeholders properly.
All right. So we should have these flag C's are now going to appear in this non-interactable water. And, oh, dang. All right, no, they're not. Where are they? Is their, their avoidance to each other too large? What is going on? Let's double check the numbers that we put in. So we want them to be spaced at least eight apart from each other. And we want them to avoid whatever is in row three, which is this flag B, by eight. What if we said, all right, make sure you avoid it by at least four. Maybe eight is too much. It's really raining out. Just an early summer rain. Okay, writing the file. Let's see if we can get them now. Okay, good. So they're now in place. I would like it if they were more centered. But I think that's just about the best that we can do. So now we can repeat what we did earlier, except we'll fill in the spaces that are, that are far away from these, if you will. So we can give that a try. So let's see how it goes. So we will copy a lot of this. And we're gonna avo we're gonna remove these. The distances are fine for now. And we need to make sure that we specify the terrain type that we're putting on because we're no longer bounding them to within a certain distance of something. Okay, and then critically, per Huhu Coyotal's suggestion, we're going to have them avoid this one right here. So three, eight. And we got them avoiding three, which is this flag B. Why is it only avoiding it by one, though? They really only... No, we're going to have them avoid it by two, at least. Maybe even three. Let's start with two, though. So we're going to have them avoid by two and two. And then we're going to have them avoid... Um, we might actually have to increase this spacing here, too, but we'll try it without. This is just auto-filled four. So have them avoid these by four, which I think is a little bit too much. Maybe three would be a better number. Two and three. Save it and let's let's run it. See how it looks. I'll be right back. Step away real quick. Restroom.
All right. So that should be all set. Let's try it. All right, thoughts. We headed in the right direction with this. Let me. Add it to our coastline as well. Our unbuildable rock beach. It's not quite where I want. What the heck? This is supposed to be avoiding this. I think I need to increase that avoidance by one more too. So it should be two and four. safe and let's copy this too this down here increment this upwards and we will put this on URB we'll try running that again Okay, it's all set. What do we think? I think the avoidance could be increased a bit. I'm actually not sure, because this is clearly in violation, unless this rock is being created in a different place, which is possible. The other possibility is that instead of putting it on unbuildable rock terrain to uh, to make it adjacent to existing rocks that have already gone down, that's that have already been placed. That's another option. But what I'm sort of struggling here is that this looks really dark, and it doesn't it doesn't go well with the desert. So, I don't like it. I think having it avoid some of these is a good, I think it's a good choice. And the other thing I'm wondering about is instead of the rubble, can I put, well, probably not. Just thinking it could be neat to put the sea rocks down. The, co the color should change. I can't change the color, but I can change how many of these rocks are present because the sheer number of them is really quite the contrast. It just doesn't seem like it fits against all of this desert gravel. I Fundamentally, they don't. They don't have any business on this um, 
unbuildable rock beach, I think, is the is the chief problem. Let's delete that, save it. Let's run it real quick. That seems more reasonable to me. And we might be able to put like a low density of sea rocks across this, like super low. Not that many. This transport ship can access this through here, and it should be able to access through. Can get into that. Can get in this way. Can get in here. So there's not a gazillion landing spots. There are some landing spots. Hey, thanks for stopping in, Hoo Hoo Coyotal 22, and giving your awesome ideas. Been some really good stuff. Really appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll see you next time. I'm really excited to see what you submit for the RMS Cup 2 map contest. Should be some good, some good maps for sure. So I guess we could adjust these rocks if the players really can't find their way in, but they should be able to get in just fine. Or we could adjust the collision radius of these rocks. Either way. I would like to do something for these tidal pools. I think that could be a lot of fun. Do some, some deep fish or something. All right, so I think first thing, we're going to add some sea rocks, not that many, to here. So let's do that first. I don't even think we're going to have aqueduct rubble underneath them. It's just going to be sea rocks. So we will delete this and copy this and we'll paste it here Oops. and yeah that's going to be on the non-interactable water we really can't put these sea rocks on anything other than the non-interactable water I think 
Yo, yo, dude, how's it going? Welcome. So maybe like six and six. Or I bet we could do four and four. And what are these avoidances now? Scripters. Good. Yeah, well, Hoo Hoo Coyle was here, but he had to leave. Jaw Zero Zero was here at one point. So we've got, we've had some good scripters here. So three and eight. All right, we're not going to have it care about what is in eight. We're still going to have it avoid three for sure. Yo, yo, are you planning on streaming? I want your uh, I want your help testing this map tonight. Hopefully it's going to be tonight. Fingers crossed. Okay. And we're going to have these avoid or I'm going to have this one avoid this other one. You're playing CBA Castle Blood Automatic. <sighs> All right. It's your life. It's your life. If CBA makes you happy, you should play as much of it as you can. Until you get tired of it, and then you can play something else. You'll try to be there. Well, I'd like to cast the match. Get eight people playing on it. Writing to file. All right, let's see what we did here. I will show you this map, Yo-Yo, as soon as it generates a new version. Okay, so we do have a few more scattered sea rocks in here. Oh man. That's annoying. But what are you going to do? Go back to the center quickly. Here? What about it? I mean, these flags are just cosmetic. I can remove those at any time. I mean, the center of this, the center of these islands. So, yo yo, this is like Socotra. Four Socotras on one map. You love Socotra, Yo-Yo. It should be right up your alley. Oh, yes, absolutely. Should be a lot of fun. I don't think ships can fully navigate these passages, unfortunately. No. Well, this one they can. But he can't get through there. He could get through that. Doesn't look like he can sail in. Well, maybe he can from here. I don't think so, though. Or the other starting alternative yo-yo is that everybody starts a nomad start on these mangrove shallows. And then they could potentially land on one of these islands if they wanted. But if they do, they shouldn't lose their transport ship because uh, 
well, then you won't be able to get back out. You cannot dock on these big islands. Let me get the dock here and I'll show you. So, no dock. Can't build a dock anywhere along here. But you can get to this island with transport ships. Oh, and you obviously can't walk off. So, if everything that you own starts on one of these islands, you're stuck on one of these islands. Yeah, I just wish I could make the tidal pools look less boxy, you know? That's annoying. Maybe I could put, like, more flags on the desert gravel and then have these avoid those flags by a certain amount. That could be worth trying. One way empire gate. Exactly, Zerg. It makes me wonder what Zerg would do on a map like this. Whenever I'm designing a map for use in a community game, I always think about what Zerg would do on it. That way players have at least somewhat of an option to get off their main island. I disagree. I think that's that's the fun part. If players get stuck on their island, what they do, as long as there is a standard victory enabled and they can build a wonder, then it's fine. But yes, I, I will be, let me put it to you like this, I will be disappointed if I'm casting this played in a community setting and somebody doesn't get trapped on an island. Uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing somebody get trapped on an island. I think that will be hilarious, especially if it's Emu Warrior. I'm don't tell anybody I said this, but if I play Emu on this map, I want to wait to see that Emu has colonized one of these islands, and then I'll get everybody to gang up on him and kill him everywhere except the island, so that he's stuck on the island. That's just a pipe dream of mine. Like, Emu Warrior being stuck somewhere and I don't have to worry about him in a community game. It's super easy to get trapped on an island, I think. You think so? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's got to be played on a giant map. There's all kinds of space. It could be. Most of the, most of the important resources are on um, the islands in the center. So, maybe... All right, so I'm going to I'm going to put those flags back in. So insert rows above to landlocked warrior. You think you'd intentionally get stuck on the island and go for the wonder? If you get stuck on the island though, it removes conquest victory and relic victory, unless you get stuck with all the relics. So if you get stuck on the island, you basically have to go wonder. Or you have to, like, yeah, no, you have to go wonder. You can't, I guess you could sling somebody on the island, but you couldn't win that way. All right. We're going to place this on DLC Desert Gravel. And we're going to, yeah, we're going to have Tentman Distance Group Placement of 1. It's going to be a lot of objects, unfortunately. Let's try 2. And then we'll have these flag A's 
avoid this by three. And we'll see if they can spawn. They may not be able to spawn. We'll have them avoid by three. Would there even be enough resources to get a wonder? Oh yeah. You'll have to take into account that the player will be physically unable to win and that would be incredibly unfair. Alright, so this is going to avoid the flag D's by three, which are going to be spaced two apart, and we'll see if this kind of pushes um, these flag A's out a bit. Okay. Not that. So there are two possible starting configurations for the map. The town centers that you see now with like the standard villagers and the scout and resources and everything here. And then the nomad version where if you select low resources in the lobby, instead of players spawning with town centers in these locations, they actually spawn with units on the mangrove shallows. And then they have the choice of colonizing these islands to get to the resources on them. It's also technically possible, if, I guess, if you were allies with somebody, that you could load units onto their transport ship and they could get you off the island, but you'd be at their mercy. All right. Um, you know, I think that helped. I do think that helped. Let me try increasing the avoidance by one more. Because that would be even better. But I, I do think that this helped. Shorefish? Oh yeah, we'll be doing lots of them, Zerg. 100%. Doing lots of shore fish. All right, what happens when we increase this to four? And say we make this, we can make this three now. All right. But yeah, I'm trying to make these tidal pools here, and I want to put fish inside of them. And then also just fish around the outside, but mainly inside of the tidal pools. Shorefish or box turtles. And this is also one big tidal pool here, too. So I'll probably have some fish in addition to berries. Okay, writing to file. Let's see if we got rid of the title pools yet. No, this is good then. So we've managed to push them away even further. This is reasonable, I like this. We can continue to work on this, but this is providing some pretty good spacing, I think. For, uh, yeah, I mean, this one, 
this one sort of failed because it's close to the forest. So we could have these avoid forest zone by like five or something. And that should solve that problem. So let's let's do that. Forest distance, let's say five. Um Okay, and let's run that. And that should do it. And then we can start adding to it. All right. So it should look exactly the same, except it should not be able to get this close to these trees, or really the mangrove trees either. Yeah, it's OK. Yes, yes, yes. I heard about that. I think it was uh, Bazadrone that made the map. What they need to do is I don't think it's scaled properly, right? Because I don't know what map size they used, but if they used giant, giant is four times the area of a tiny map, but they were divided into two halves. So that means that each half was twice as big as it should have been. But because it was, I guess, I guess you could argue that it's like the same distance as equipped, but the, 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 the sizing didn't quite work out. So I think what they need to do is they need to actually do the giant map size in a 2v2 and then have four town centers and then have a different map in each quadrant. So maybe Arabia, Arena, um, Islands, and I don't know, Black Forest or something in the four different quadrants. Now that would be really cool. That would that would be very wild. I bet the even the pros would struggle to handle a four town center start at the beginning, I feel like. Not necessarily because they don't have the APM for it, but because their opponent is going to be giving them a hard time. But these these pools are, are properly spaced now, so I'm happy about that. They're even out on the on the mangrove shallows a bit, which is okay. And we could, the thing is, is if we put these rocks down, they're going to be blocking units and then they'll be wallable too. So maybe we just kind of like embrace these rocks and say, screw it, put these rocks down everywhere and then reduce their collision radius or whatever to zero so that they just don't block units. Maybe that's kind of the best approach. Or maybe have, or have four maps, but two TCs could spawn per player, one on each map, and you don't know which map you're going to be up against your opponent with. So you get two of the four maps each time you play. Genius, Zerg. That's a great idea. So you could be like, well, the thing is, is at that point, why don't you just, why don't you just have a random map pool, and just you know, let the game select the map randomly. I guess if it's two, you don't know which combinations. Do it, says Zerg. <sighs> I'll try. So we need to be able to put some kind of rock formation down on this unbuildable rock beach that does not interfere with the pathing of units. That's kind of the rock and hard place, if you will, pardon the pun, that we're in, right? We don't like the aesthetic of the sea rocks for the tidal pools. I think, and I, I think there are too many of them. I think it's too dark. But if we use too many of these big rocks, then we won't be able to path properly between you know, the mangrove shallows on the outside and 
the the desert island on the inside. So I think that that is going to be the play, is is to make these big rocks no longer solid eye candy, to make them immaterial stuff that you can walk through. They're pretty big though, so if you walk on them, it could obscure your unit, and you wouldn't be able to see it properly. So these are the struggles that I have. All right, I'm going to be right back, guys. I'm going to take a very quick break. I'll be back in about five minutes. There is something that smells really good in the kitchen, and I'm going to go check out what it is. I've been sitting here for the past 10 minutes smelling that, and I've just been like, oh, I have to go. So I'm going to go check that out. I'll be right back. We'll continue working on this. I want to try to play this for community games tonight. Um, I've still got some work to do. But um, we are making progress for sure. All right, I'll be right back. Yes, I think that's what it is, Cookie Pirate. All right, I'm back. Unfortunately, there were no cookies. They were brownies, and they're being made for something else. Yeah, fundamentally, I just don't like these boxes. I really can't... I just can't shake the fact that I don't like these boxes.
Yeah, I don't like the boxes, guys. I'm sorry. I just I spent all this time working on it, but now I have ideas. So we're just going to take this and we're just going to kind of delete it all. I just don't like it. I'm sorry. So this is fine. DLC Desert Gravel. We'll place them three apart or whatever it is. These flags. You agree with me? Yeah, I, I just, I think that we can, we can do better. We can do better. Um, so I'm going to try. So we're going to, all right. That. So now we're going to have another type of placeholder. And these are going to be flag B's. And we're going to place these on beach terrain. Well, it really doesn't matter what we place them on, honestly. Um, anything but mangrove shallows. But we can we can place them on beach. It's fine. All right, we're gonna we're gonna space these. I think what, four four part would be fine. And their whole thing is they're going to avoid this DLC desert gravel. So uh, this one a six. And they're going to avoid that by four. So this will set up a series of flags here. And then we're going to do one more flag. Actually, we don't have to do the flag. We could... Let's just do the, the alternating rocks along this beach terrain here, avoiding all of these other flags. So let's do that first. And then we'll run that. So, rock and rock 2, find is 13.23, more neutral Gaia convertibles. Okay, these are also going to be placed on beach terrain, but instead of avoiding the, the gravel, the desert gravel placeholders, we're going to have them avoid the flag B placeholders. So it's going to be seven, and they're going to avoid those by four. Actually, by five. Because those ones are spaced by fours. And the first one is going to have temp min distance group placement of one, and then the second one is going to have zero. And then we'll save. Hey, the otter one. He found me live for once. Welcome. The otter one, we we think you're really going to like this map. So get this. Mangrove shallows. Forests. Okay. Big islands like Socotra. However, um... You can't, you can't dock them. It's impossible to build a dock. You're the only channel on YouTube I have the bell for. I appreciate that, the other one. That is very touching. So you can't dock, and you can't walk across. Where is it? Got some boyar. He can't walk across. Hey, Tipe, welcome. Uh, however, you could, if you if you had access to the outside, you could sail in on a transport ship and offload units. 
What? There's an Iroquois warrior? All right. Transport ship. Where is it? So, transport ship. So there are two possibilities. Um, possibility number one is if you have a normal configuration setup, if you have a normal configuration setup, then you actually start with your town center against an opponent, and it's basically four Socotra maps. And this was Cesar's idea. He approached me about the concept for this map. He wanted a blend between Socotra and enemy archipelago. And he wanted to do it because it's like an economy tournament. You literally can watch four matches being played at the same time. So you, you, need, you, you can have one quarter the number of wrecks. The other possibility is that if, re, if low resources are selected, you actually start with villagers on these mangrove shallows. And you can build up your bases normal, and there will be resources out here. And then you can choose to land these islands to gain access to additional resources. Um, however, if everything outside of, that you own gets destroyed, you'll be stuck on this island if you landed there. Okay. So it's got, it'll have community game implications as well. So these, these beach markers are not avoiding the gravel by a large enough distance. So we need to increase that. So much more work to get eight to play at the same time. Oh, I don't mind it. This is fun. Well, it's economical for the casters because imagine that you have... Um, because if you can play eight people at a time, you can eliminate three rounds from a tournament. All right, now... Okay, so these flag bees, they need to, what the, they need to avoid by more. So maybe like avoid by, mm, let's avoid, let's have them avoid by eight. And we'll, we'll space these flag bees by s seven. Getting eight players at the same time is hard, trust me. That's true. Maybe they have a set day that the tournament is happening on, and your sign-up is contingent on that. I'm not really sure. Scheduling is a nightmare, though. I, I agree. All right, it's all set. Oh, well, yes, it was very hard, the otter one. All right, we need to increase that avoidance even more. Oh, come on. So these ones should not be so far apart then. So these flag bees. Oh shoot, no, it was um it was this that we were gonna increase to. Alright, this has to go back down to um four. Okay, and then this number should be Let's increase that to 10, and we'll make this 9. I kind of like that line of rocks there. 
Oh yes, that's that's what I'm thinking now. Is I can put this line of rocks here, and I want to see how that looks, and then I can put like intermediate rocks in between in different piles to form the tidal pools. And the rocks would also sort of provide an explanation for why the water looks different. So I'm I kind of I I kind of like that concept a little better. It is way, way better. See, I knew we could do better. We just like, got to make sure we get these placeholder spacings right. Because uh, that getting screwed up is affecting the rocks like over here too. So we can, we can definitely, yeah, we don't have, this definitely does not have to be like this. That was a, that was my bad. The otter one, he was distracting me. It's kind of cool having some rocks on the land next to the shallows, though. Uh, you mean over here? Yeah, but we have we have other more regulatable ways of doing that. All right. So that should be much better. Except it's not because these are sometimes appearing on here because these. Uh, I guess it's just a funny shape is making it's having a hard time conforming properly. So, I mean, it's already so few that we'll just change that spacing again. We got it set to nine. Let's set it to four. I think it, it'll be fine. And that way we'll get a more thorough conf conformation to the to the shoreline, conformity to the shoreline, I should say. Okay. Let's see, is it still? Nope, it's done. Okay, there is an opening here. Uh, that makes sense because it's close to where the player start is, and so the desert gravel runs out, and therefore this runs out. I actually don't really mind so much that that's there. It almost forces the players to approach from a couple different directions since that's there. Um, we can maybe deal with that later. So I think the primary question that we need to answer now is, are we going to make these, these big rocks 
passable? Are we going to make it so that ships can just sail right through them? And that it doesn't really matter. There are advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is it simplifies things a lot. The disadvantage is that it could be less intuitive, right? Units could hide inside of these rocks. So maybe what we do is we increase the spacing a bit, two and then one, and then maybe we put down, maybe we put down the the normal sea rocks. But you know we we have so few of them that it's mostly this this aesthetic this color because this color goes well with this. So let's try that. I don't want to change the radius on these rocks. I I would prefer not to. So let's change this to two. No, let's, let's change this to, let's say, 3, 2, 1, and then the last one's going to be 0. And we're going to have C rocks 1 and 2 here. Actually, hold on. Let's go 2, 1, and then this is 0, but we'll tell them to avoid actor areas and such. C rocks one, C rocks two, these are going to be placed on the beach train, they're going to have the same avoidances that the other rocks have, and Tentman distance group placement they'll have none. So they'll basically fit within these little gaps and spaces wherever is possible. Actually, I am going to give this one at least one so they can't be crammed right next to each other. Okay, let's, let's give that a try. Sometimes you gotta like do it wrong, do it some way that you don't want to see it, and then come up with another idea while you're working on it. So the otter one, did you raid me? Is this a raid? You brought Tipe with you. Or Tipe happened to arrive at the same time. If so, thank you for the raid. And you can't really, you know, raid people between Twitch and YouTube. They're competitors. They don't want you to be able to raid from one platform to another, but that would be pretty sick if you could. Like, could you imagine being raided by some Twitch streamer if you were streaming on YouTube or having some YouTube streamer raid somebody on Twitch? That would be freaking amazing. But it'll probably never happen. Okay. So I believe this to be passable. What is this? Really? Strange that that ended up there. Sufficiently perforated, and I think it's... I think the color is mostly these of these other rocks, the brown rocks. So you should be able to still get in there okay. Let's see. Yeah, transport ship can just sail through in a couple different places. So that's good. Um,
So now what we need to do is we need to put down the placeholders again on this non-interactable water. And then we'll put the rocks down to avoid those placeholders. So it'll be similar to what we've already done. But we already know that you can sail in. So we're going to put the rocks down on this non-interactable water. Okay. And these ones we don't, we don't, oh no, we don't want this. We don't care if they're all the brown rocks because you're already moving in, right? You're already moving into offload. So this is just going to prevent the transports from coming, um, from going tr sort of tra tra parallel to the shore, if you will. All right. So continue. Oops, we'll continue this. And we're going to need another flag type. So we'll copy this here. Oops. And these are going to be flag C. And this is going to be on water non-interactable. And the Tempman distance group placement is going to be, um, let's say, 8. And I don't, oh yes, we need to have it avoid all of this stuff up here. So we're going to have it avoid these rocks. And we're going to have it avoid those by at least two. And we'll see what happens. Avoid them by two and maybe even be placed within three. So they're not too close to the shoreline. But I don't think that we can place within three of all of them because um, we can only put one argument here, and we can put as many as we want here. It's just the way the scripter works. So we'll save that, clear that, run. Now I got a way to play warships and watch your stream. What do you what do you mean by that? You mean you have a dual monitor setup? You've had one for a while. All right. I don't know if I told you this, but I unlocked Midway. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to put more of them down. Oh, nice. I think I'm going to put more of them down. Maybe have their spacing before. four. 
So I have Midway researched, but I don't have the credits to unlock it. It's sad. I think you'll really enjoy Midway. Yeah, if I ever play it, yeah. Okay. I'll get it eventually. So now, on the water non-interactable, we can add rocks that avoid these locations and these locations. So we're effectively creating these little pockets, these tidal pools, if you will. And we're not going to be approaching, we're not really going to be doing it on the beach, so it should be fine. I'm just debating whether or not to do that, to add that now. I think I'm going to add it now. Okay. So. We're going to have rock one and rock two. And we are going to put them on water non interactable. Oops. One of them is going to have temp min distance group placement one, and the other is going to have zero or none, essentially. We're going to have these two, they're going to avoid the placeholders, this placeholder here. And they're also going to avoid this beach placeholder here too. Because remember, this beach placeholder is right here. And if we don't have them avoid it, they'll come up and they'll just fill this entire area in, which would be pretty ugly and I don't want. So we'll, uh, we'll get that. Okay, so we have that. And we want to avoid that by like 10, I think, 10 or 12. 12 is probably too much. Let's let's go eight for now. Ah, no. So we'll go eight. And then the next one that we're going to avoid is we're obviously going to avoid this other placeholder that we just made for this. And we're not going to avoid it by eight, though. We're going to avoid it by four. And we'll just try that with these numbers and see where we end up with this. I don't think there are any crocodiles in the Americas, are there? That kind of bothers me. We got llamas and crocodiles on the same map. Let's look it up. Okay, there is the American crocodile. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. They're, they're a thing. This is where they... They live now, I think. They are... They're vulnerable. I like how vulnerable is, like, considered... It's... If you go, like... 
more than past the first two, you're vulnerable. They prefer salinity, resulting in the species congregating in brackish lakes, mangrove swamps, lagoons, caves, keys, and other small islands. So these would be very appropriate then for this area. They love the Caribbean, it looks like. There he is. So they're not alligators, they're crocodiles. I think I'm going to upgrade them from the elephant, though. I'm going to make them a little bit more dangerous. The elephant attacks faster. This one's got a tooth infection of some kind. Or he's got something in his mouth. I don't know what that is. He's probably fine, though. He probably doesn't care. Because he's just a crocodile. Those things have been around since the time of the dinosaurs. And they'll probably be around long after humans are gone from this planet. That classification is different from the threatened or endangered that the U.S. uses to classify such species. Ah, okay. So the writers of that article are not American. All right, so the avoidance between these flags is too great, and therefore the rocks are not being successfully placed. So let us try again. That's not necessarily the case. All right, so we'll have them avoid by two, and we'll see how that works. That's the international classification. And how are you an expert on endangered species? Did you, um, did you look up the endangered species before you took a shotgun to the birds on the, uh, on the runway? You guys just, you're like, oh, these birds are in the way of the planes. Let's check to make sure they're not endangered. And then you make sure they're not endangered, and then you go out and take care of the birds. It's birds, right? I'm pretty sure you're telling me it was birds. I can't think of what other animal it would be. You've looked into it a bit. You already know that they're not endangered, huh? Have hundreds of thousands of them. How could they be endangered? All right, we're actually going to reduce that to one then. And we we need to decrease the spacing of these too. So let's reduce this to one. And we will also... <clears throat> Let's reduce it to one for now, and you guys can see the effect of that. We can all see the effect of that, but I think what's going to happen is it's going to start to block these other locations here. We have to take wildlife training at least once a year, usually twice. It's all set. These rocks on the coastline, I gotta say, you guys, these rocks are the trickiest part of the whole thing. I promise.
So these pools need to be a little bit further apart, I think. So they're more discreet. Improve the rocks. But as you can see, it gets it starts getting a lot thicker. So I don't think we're ready for these yet. Okay, so we got this ring back. So really the question is, what are we going to do? We could, I guess we could try to increase the size of these, these boxes, but then it'll look, you know, it'll look unnatural. It looks square-like. But we want to get these, these, we basically want to form a line of rocks, if you will. Um... Other Gaia something like something like this. That's the that's the desired outcome. So I'm just thinking about how we can achieve that. We could Hmm. No, we can't use gates because they could have any possible any possible manner of orientations, right? You know, we could actually put another placeholder in between. And we could try to fit as many of them as possible. And we could have them, like, avoid these other placeholders and be placed on water non-interactable. Let's give that a try. I think I have an idea. So, all it's going to take is another placeholder. Flag D. Water non-interactable. And we will have lots of groups. More groups than could ever fit. Maybe like object quantity of 10 or something. So it goes in both directions. And we'll have it avoid number, what's whatever's in 8, so A12. And we'll have it avoid each of those by at least one. 
And let's just give that a try. Let's see if that works. Spaced at least four apart. So why do you have to take a wildlife training class at least once a year, possibly twice? Is it because the company believes that you might accidentally shoot an endangered bird that's on the runway? I mean, you know they're not endangered, right? You know better. But but does, does that actually happen at airports somewhere? Like, people shoot endangered animals? The people that are working at the airport shoot endangered animals that are on the runway to get them cleared off? F -F FAA regulations. Why do you think the FAA regulates that? Um... So it looks like what it's doing is it's just spilling over. Oh, we need to have it avoid this possibly too. It looks like it's just kind of spilling over to touch these rocks everywhere it can. And that's really not what we want. We want it to not touch that. We want it to not be like loitering on the inside surface of these rocks. So we're going to have it avoid the rocks, too. So we're going to copy this, paste it here. So we're going to change this to a 12. We're going to have it avoid that by 1. So it should not be touching or adjacent to it. And I don't think we need this object quantity anymore. Hmm. It just keeps giving me a hard time. Is this really the only valid location? Hmm. I don't know, maybe I just need to bite the bullet and expand this size to something large and specify that it be on this terrain type and call it a day. So we get rid of this. Oh shoot, this is not its own number either. That's kind of a problem. Oh well. We'll delete it. And then we'll We'll increase the object quantity here to 
maybe like 16. And group placement radius of 1, so that it forms a perfect perfect 4 by 4 square. Okay. Everything else is saved. And we'll just make these big blocks where rocks cannot spawn. Cesar, how's it going? Still working on it. We're doing the trickiest part, which are the tidal pools. I mean, it's an estuary, so you have to have tidal pools. Uh, it's been slow. But that's all right. I don't know if we'll get to test tonight, unfortunately. I'll have to step away in a few minutes, too. I will continue to work on it, though. All right. So we should have larger groups. Why is that not? Yeah, maybe we should specify that it looks dope. Thanks, Cesar. Maybe we got all this like choppy terrain in here interfering with it. So I think we're going to do a couple of things then. We're going to come back down here and we're going to get rid of object quantity and group placement radius. And then what we'll do is we will add another placeholder. It's my solution to everything is just throw placeholders at it. But it's it works. It works great, actually. So this is going to be flag D. And we're going to place it within four. Oops. Within four. of whatever's above it, which is A12. No, 4 is too much, actually. Within 3. And we're not going to, we're not going to specify a terrain type for it. That's going to be the big thing. I'm going to, I'm going to do 2 for now. I think, I still think 3 is too big. All right. All right. Oh, come on. I think I know what's going on. I need to create more avoidance zones. Oh, it's just a pain. All right. So scratch that. Can't do that. The FAA requires training in wildlife management, which covers more than shooting animals and birds that are not protected species. So like the, um, the airport zoo.
it's all fairly interesting. All right, we are going to place more placeholders. We're going to put them on URB now. Unbuildable rock beach, and we're going to give them spacing of one, I think. No, let's give them let's give them no spacing. not be too many of them. It's just along the beach. <clears throat> All right. So this should be lining the beach all across here. Placeholders now. Interesting. So we got beach train even that's like reaching up to um, even to like all the way up here. This unbuildable rock beach, which is surprising me. Would not have expected that. So that kind of explains some of the funky behavior, too. The good news is that we can tell it to avoid... We can tell it to avoid these rocks by a certain amount, and we can clear that up. And then we can put another placeholder that literally avoids the spaces between these two. So it's slow, but I think we can do that. So first thing is we're going to program this to be smart enough to avoid, actually, we literally have it right here. Avoid all those rocks and avoid them by two. Similar to flag C, except flag C is in is on water, not interactable. So here's the flag C. And so we're going to be getting rid of a lot of these, this garbage out here. So we'll do that. Okay. Oops. And run it. All right. It's a little better. Should make it three. And then perhaps we'll be good. Let's see how three does. And, you know, we can actually have flag C avoid both of these. This will be pretty reasonable at that point. It'll be reasonably centered. I think flag C is avoiding these, these desert gravel flags. Yep. 
It's much better. It's a little, a little tight here, but ultimately the purpose of these is to place these. So we're actually going to take this and cut this out and place and paste this down here. Get rid of these. Delete that. And expand this. So this now should avoid whatever's in 12 by 2 as well. Let's see if that looks better. Okay. I think it can avoid both by two. Nope, it cannot. So, which one do we want it to avoid by two? The rocks or the beach? Hmm. I don't think it matters much. Really have it avoid by one and then move the rocks in. But I don't want to risk that somebody is able to... I don't want to risk that somebody is able to escape their island. That would be catastrophic. So I really think this might be the best option. Either way though, I'm going to end the stream here for now. I've been streaming a little over four hours. Um, I'm going to go take care of some things. I'm going to get um, get dinner and get washed up. And uh, I'll stream more tonight. The continued work on this. And it might be later. I still hope to play this tonight. I just... Um, I'm really fighting with these rocks. But I think it's a fight worth having, because if I can get these rocks looking good, uh, I'll be very, very happy, and I think the map will look fantastic. It already looks decent, I think. Well, excluding, you know, the flags. But those will be invisible later. Cesar will be here. Excellent. And I'll do my best, Cesar. So thanks, everybody, for being here, supporting the channel. Your viewership, participation means a lot to me. Keeps me motivated, keeps me going. And um, hopefully we'll be able to, to put out a product here for you pretty soon. And then we'll all enjoy it. So thanks, everybody. And I'll catch you later tonight.